What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today's is sponsored by Catch Company. That's right, Catch Co. is sponsoring today's video, and let me tell you why and what we're talking about today, man. We have got the brand new Guggen Squad Catch Co. collaboration baits. These are the poppin' filthy frogs, man. Check this stuff out. Literally brand new to the market. You guys can get these things with the link in the description at Carl's Bait and Tackle. Look at this. You guys have seen me throw the standard Filthy Frogs by the Guggen Squad quite a bit. This is the brand new Poppin' style, which has more of a lip right here. We're gonna talk about it, we're gonna review it. I just wanna go ahead and get the intro on the truck because it's a little breezy, and we're gonna go ahead, step out here, talk about these things, maybe be joined by some friends a little bit later as the sun sets. The last thing to note is it is 101, feels like 109 at this very moment down here in Dallas, Texas. These top water hits are gonna be hard to come by during the midday heat, but what I found is a pond with some grass along the edges that the bass could definitely Definitely be hanging out in a good place to target if you're talking about midday hustle with something like a frog so we're gonna see if we can't put this thing to the test in 100 degree summer heat the best time to throw these is gonna be right at sunrise or right at sunset but we're gonna see what we can't put together out here midday let's go all right man got our tackle box with some line cutters to rig this thing up oh by the way I changed into a sun shirt because you already know what the heat is. Here is the standard filthy frog, and we'll talk about the differences when we're out on the water. But essentially, this one's got a pointed nose, you guys, compared to the new filthy poppin'. And I also have cut the leg shorter on this one right here because I like to walk it, and I find it walks a little bit better for me uh, with a little bit shorter legs. So we may do the same with this guy right here, but let's just go ahead and focus on making the first few casts, guys. I'm gonna get this thing rigged up and we'll get over to the pond. All right, man, so here's the bullfrog color. I just tied on the white. I'm gonna roll with that first. I've been having a lot of uh, confidence and luck with white frogs, white bellied frogs specifically uh, this year. And so a lot of times I hear from uh, my friends throw the white bellies whenever it's clear water, throw maybe something darker if it's a little bit more stained. Of course, it depends on what the bass are seeing too. If they're seeing a lot of bullfrogs, hey, rip out this bullfrog color. Uh, but again, I'm gonna just rock this thing to get started. The all white color scheme, I'm sure it's gonna be a fan favorite. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get to this new pond I've never fished before. That kind of that kind of looked like a parking spot to me. Yeah, check this out, man. This might not be a terrible spot to try and fish this frog during the day because there's a lot of grass all around the edges here. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that bullfrog color would be better when you walk over here. It's not super clear, but that's where this lip is going to give you a bit of an advantage because it'll create more disturbance in the water. So with a slight breeze, that's going to bring these bass in from further away to come and take a look. I'm just not going to walk too close to the bank and spook anything. I'm just going to keep casting around all this grass, I'm sure. These bass are hanging out in it and in the shade. It is popping some good water, I'll tell you that. And I've got this on heavy braid, you guys. You're gonna wanna do the same thing. A lot of times we recommend 40, 50 pound plus. This setup that I have here might be 30. I think I had spooled this up a, a long time ago, but 50 pound braid is gonna be fantastic. You'll be able to get some distance. This thing's got some good weight in it. There's a weight inside of the body. I hear a small one that's also gonna make sure it lands flat every single time instead of landing upside down, uh, which I think is common across the board on most frogs, obviously, but it's just good to know. I tie a Palomar knot, making sure I'm gonna be able to rip them through the thick stuff and that heavy braid is just going to help ensure that you can get these fish even if they take you down deep into this grass here oh something just bit it you want to really fish all these openings in the grass right and so what will happen is let's say you're working it into the target zone you're really popping it and moving some water but once you get into an opening you can also walk this frog and keep him in the strike zone longer here we go the grass gets real thick over here this might be a good opportunity oh, there we go oh all right, man, first blow up right there. I was not ready. I was looking at, dude, I, there's a bed with bluegill right here. I was literally looking around at those things swimming and here comes a bass right on the edge of the grass as we talk about. Oh my gosh. And another thing to mention, guys, is I'm using a heavy rod. I think this is like a 7.4 heavy uh, for me, especially if I'm walking a frog. I like a little bit shorter, but, but extra heavy. That way I can get them out of the thick stuff, but I can walk it a little bit easier. And I haven't been walking this guy much. I'm really just popping them, allowing that popping mouth to really stir up the water. And that's what brought that bass out from under the cover. But this is where you might want to beef up from like your 7.2 medium heavy and go with something like a 7.3, 7.4, 7.6 heavy and uh, a fast tip. That way you can really get those hook sets and hammer them and get them out of stuff like pads, thick grass and debris. So the rod matters on this and then also the reel. I'm using a high gear ratio. Well, technically it's the XG or extra high gear ratio. That way you can really get them to the bank quicker and rip them out of the stuff before they take you down deep, guys. So a couple key factors. So what I'm saying is you want a beefy all around setup. I'm talking heavy braid, heavy rod, fast gear ratio reel, and you'll be ready to catch you some bass, man. Let's try and get another bite. Another thing with top water and a frog is I like to cover new ground, man, hit new water 
you know, if you're fishing something like a worm, you're down on the bottom, you can really wear out an area. But with a frog, with a buzz bait, whopper, plopper, I'm trying to cover a lot of the bank, man. So keep that in mind as well as you're fishing these baits here. There we go. There we go. First girl on the frog. Oh my gosh. Oh, that one was a decent one right there. 0 for 2 on the frog. Wowzers. Got him. That's a good one too. That's a good one. That's a good one. Come on. Get up here. Oh, guys. Wow. That's maybe the biggest bass I've caught in a while, man. That is a, that's a four to five pounder. Woo! Oh, wow. Okay. Well, what a fish. Look at that behemoth, man. Liking that popping filthy, I will tell you what. That's an urban pond giant right there. I post a lot on the stories. We're trying to hit 100,000 followers. Appreciate all y'all support over there on Instagram, man. What a beauty. Okay, let's get this guy back in the water. Oh my gosh. We'll see ya, huh? Catch Co, I thank you guys so much for sending me those and sponsoring today's video, man. I might have to go tie on that bullfrog, but uh, we're on the other side of the pond from the truck. We gotta continue walking this thing around. Imagine if we can pull out a few giants from this awesome little pond that we have never fished before, man. Whoo! Dude, I had to take a quick break in the shade after that. It's now like 102. I think feels like temp is now up to like 109 to 112. What a beast of a brand new frog though, you guys. It is literally available today and will sell out quick, I imagine, in the hottest color. So if you guys want a specific color or just want to even grab any of these, you need to go ahead and head over to Shop Carl's. They have been supporting this channel for what? The last two years almost? And I'm telling you what, they got the goods, man. So hit them up. Link is down in the description. You know that's where we get 90% of our tackle and we save 30% on all our baits with a club membership. You guys can too. I think I'm about ready to get back out here in the water, but I had to take a chill pill, man. I also got stung by a bee earlier right here, like a wasp or a bee. I was literally trying to take out the trash and recycling bin at the house and then I opened the gate and holy cluster, here comes like, dude, 10 wasps. I didn't realize it. I just got stung and I was like, ow. And I look around and here they are. And I must have just disturbed them, man. So I gotta go, I gotta stop by Walmart or something, get some spray for these things because uh, they're trying to take over the backyard. How crazy to get a midday four or five pounder. The scales in the truck, you know I normally have all that stuff on me, but if it was like, if it was any bigger, I probably would have ran around this place dipping him as I go and get the scale to see what we're talking about. But I'd say four to five pounds on that one right there. I mean, a behemoth. I really didn't expect a big bass like that to bite. I just gotta be honest. I did not expect a huge bass like that to bite, but hey, they're here, so I'm gonna try and catch them. Let's go. Oh, yeah, let's really go. One of the craziest things too, and I tried to stay quiet and not spook that bass, is that he came up and he missed it the first time. Either that or he just came up and looked at it. I'm trying to think back. But the bass came up to the surface and, uh, and I saw him. And so I popped it again, popped it again, and I let it pause and then boom, she got it. So happy we landed that one, man. That was the one I was after. And you'll see, you know, normally I'm working those walking frogs and I'm just doing a twitch, 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 twitch. You can see him walking right now, left to right. And that is fantastic for uh, staying in the strike zone for a longer period of time, working these things real slow. But with this popping frog, I'm really trying to get it to boom, stir up that water, cause some vibration, get these bass attention, draw them in from further away. So I'm almost giving it a sweeping, sweeping pop. I mean, just like a popper. There's almost no right or wrong way to work this thing. I mean, you just do your thing and you're gonna bring the bass towards you. I mean, you could go with a few fast pops. He'll kind of dart around a little bit. You can go with one fierce pop. I mean, just mix it up. See what the bass are in the mood for because sometimes they want it on the pause. Sometimes they're chasing after it while it's on the run. I mean, you just gotta really work it and see what's gonna happen in your spot on any given day. So let's go ahead and keep circling this place. Yeah, man, so again, those beefy setups on those hook sets, you really wanna drive it home because these are not little finesse hooks, like small gauge hooks right here. I mean, these things are not gonna get bent out, none of that right there, but you're gonna have to drive home with a lot of force to get that to penetrate. So you, you see that uh, fish blow up on the frog, give it a little one, two, and then bam, hammer that thing. Right when you see the fish pop up at the bait, it's real common when you start fishing frogs to try and set the hook right away. But half the time, guys, they have not even got that thing back down into the water with their mouth closed yet, and you will pull it right out of their mouth. A very key, key aspect of frog fishing. You have got to absolutely let them take it back underwater, have it for just a second, almost feel the weight of that fish, and then set the hook. You could even like have a little quote lined up in your head. You could even like see the bass blow up on it and then say, there's one, then set the hook. I mean, there's no need to set the hook right away or you're just simply gonna lose that fish. Got to give them time when you're fishing the frog, guys. I won't say you won't get lucky if they bite and you set the hook right away. That definitely happens, uh, but you will miss more 
over the long term. I'm also not going to say you let the bass take it underwater and you're guaranteed to get it. I mean, frogs are notorious for having a lower hookup ratio <laughs> than uh, some other baits out there if I'm not, you know, let's be real. You know, you fish something like a whopper plopper with treble hooks or maybe even like a, a spook or a popper with treble hooks and you're probably going to get more of these fish. Now, there's just no denying how fun a frog can be in the areas you can fish it in where you can't fish those other baits. I'm not going to fish a whopper plopper right here. I could definitely fish a whopper plopper right here, but I'm not going to be able to work it as close to the grass every single cast. I'm not going to be able to work it in these holes because there's just no way. You just can't keep cruising it through that stuff. You're going to only catch grass and it's not going to be effective. So. A frog is absolutely fantastic for a pond like this, and you know these bass are gonna be up here feeding along the grass's edge where all this little bait fish is just cruising around, man. I'm seeing little fish all over this place. So the bass like to hang out on the edges, if not even to feed, just to stay in the shade. I mean, they're predators, man. Bass are fierce. That's where that pop and lip really comes into play on this one. If it was a walking frog, I wonder if he would have been as interested. This thing is really irritating those fish with all that water popping around. Might have been what done it. Also, it's funny, Devin and I use left and right-handed reels, but I don't know if y'all knew this, Today's the 30th anniversary of Left Handers Day. National, or is it International Left Handers Day? And I'm out here throwing a left-handed bait caster. Maybe, maybe that's why we got lucky with that catch. That's so funny. Literally, August 13th is International Left Handers Day, celebrating left-handed individuals, man. So uh, I'm not left-handed, but it's just kind of funny that we were rocking this setup today, and it's like the only thing I brought with me. Where's my left-handers at, man? Comment down below. Well, we've covered a lot more of this pond, man, and not any more bites. I'm kind of curious if they were all congregating on a certain side over there. I did see more bluegill and bluegill beds over there, uh, so maybe there's more food. Oh, this heat is getting to me, man. I'm even in the shade. I might have to uh, just hustle back to the truck and take a slight intermission. I am working this thing so fast right now. Quick intermission you guys before i give you the final review on the frogs i got some of this good stuff right here hot shot and look man these wasps are all over in the corner right here and that's the reason why i haven't taken the trash and recycling around because as soon as i opened that gate earlier i did not see them and they all started going crazy and stung me so let's go ahead and try and take care of these for y'all you're supposed to do this at sunset i guess because that's when insects are the least active well we're getting there we're like an hour away from sunset shake it really well it's supposed to go like up to 27 feet it says. We shall see. I don't know how accurate it is. Okay. Yeah, I can't say I've ever used that stuff before. What? Well, so he's flying. He's walking along the edge. It doesn't seem to have done the trick just yet. Okay, he just fell down. So I might be able to take the trash and recycling around tonight, guys. This is a plus. I'm gonna let that do its thing. Talk to you some more about these frogs and come check on that later and try and take my trash and recycling around because they gotta go out, man. All right, man, wasps are taken care of. Positive note, <laughs> trash and recycling can get taken care of. And now we can talk about these frogs. And speaking of frogs, look at what we have got on the table, man. We got our collection of Guggen walking frogs and the brand new Poppin' frogs, man. I'm actually pretty pumped about these things after catching that big one on the first day out in what some would say ideal conditions. Of course, summertime, midday heat. I mean, those bass are most likely gonna be in the shade or maybe even in that grass. First things first is braid. The one thing I forgot to mention is that one of the main reasons why you use braided line, aside from like strength components and when you're pulling it through the grass, is actually that the line floats. So if you're gonna try and use like floral carbon, the floral is gonna sink. And what's going to happen is all of a sudden your nose is going to dip down on your frog. You just, you got to use braid with frogs. That's just the go-to. Also, uh, color choice. So when it comes to color choice, white belly is typically what I will use in clear water. Something like a black might be used in stained water. And then you just kind of go with the flow with all the rest of them. There's like the chartreuse kind of colorways. And then the ones with like the pattern. This is more of a bluegill pattern right here. Or imitate maybe some bait fish. And then this right here has got a little bit of a, a texture to it. And so you just kind of play around and see which one you like best, which one the bass like best in your area. And you just continue to rock that color. We actually do have uh, a couple colors in both styles though. So here's the walking and the popping in the bullfrog color. You'll see I cut the legs shorter on that walking one just because, like I say, it allows it to walk a little bit better. And then uh, on the poppin' I, I have yet to cut the legs. On this white one, I did trim the legs down a little bit on the poppin' one today, not because I plan on walking it left and right, but the thing is, uh, I just I just prefer the shorter legs, I guess. This guy right here, this filthy frog, has probably caught me more fish than any frog I have ever used, man. I'll say I've used a lot of frogs, y'all, and I've been disappointed with almost every one I've used, and then I've had days where I'm thrilled with every one I've used. So it's just, look, frogs are known to not have the best hookup ratio. We talked about that earlier in today's video. And then at the 
same time, they do attract some big bites and you will catch some monsters on these things and it's just too much fun and you can fish them in areas you really can't get other baits into. When you're talking about thick pads and brush, I mean, there's not a way to get these other baits in there. And so frogs have their place, especially during the summertime, man, you guys got to get to throw them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, yeah, we're going to continue to use this thing a lot probably in the next uh, few weeks because the bite is hot, man. With that being said, guys, thank you so much to Catchco for sponsoring today's video and continuing to support the channel. You guys can pick these filthy frogs up the poppin style, man, before they sell out at Carl's Bait and Tackle. The link is at the top of the description and in the pinned comment. We'll see y'all tomorrow. <clears throat>